you want to get into Magic the Gathering, and you really want to figure out where to start, and you don't quite know where. Well, I'm here to go ahead and give you everything you need to know about starting and doing it where you're not spending a ton of money on everything you possibly could be. Which, I know, sounds great, right? It sounds absolutely wonderful not being in a position where you have to spend way too much money to play this game. That would be fantastic, right? Right? So, how do we start playing Magic the Gathering without spending a ton of money? Well, there's a obvious answer, first of all. The very, very first one is uh, you could go and uh, look at my $15 challenge where I've got several videos, like just a lot of video, just way, way, way too many videos that are all based around $15 decks you can play right now. And they are all very, very powerful right out of the box, the proverbial box, as it were. There's really a box there, but you know what I mean? The only problem though, is this doesn't actually get you started in the game. And there's something else. There's another huge problem with starting with one of my $15 decks. Let's say you click on one of my videos. Boom, there's me. There's me talking right there. And so you go down here and you click on the Moxfield list and you go, oh, I want to go ahead and purchase one of these decks so I can start out. Here's Mishra's used cars. And if I update everything to cheapest here, just to make sure, the deck is sitting at $15.16. Super easy. That's affordable. We can buy the deck on TCG Player, and then it should cost $15.16, right? So then we go ahead and add everything to cart. And what do we get? We get a hundred and eighty two dollars ha huh, that's not actually the amount that i was trying to spend for that deck that's weird and so you might tell yourself well that's fine i can just hit the optimize button real quick and we can go ahead and just get that price a little lower and that'll get me to where i'm going now here's the first problem if you're a person who is new to Magic the Gathering, you don't want to go through all of this stuff you want to just pick up a deck and play the game so you click on here and the cart subtotal after everything uh, comes out to $45 because your estimated shipping is 25 of those dollars. And then some people weren't selling the cards for the exact amount we were trying to get them for. So the price total is like 20 bucks. That's fine. You also might be like me and had something in the cart already that you forgot about. And so you undo all of that and you realize, huh, maybe that's not the best way to start the game. Because now you're having to start with all kinds of weird preconceived notions about the game and this game now feels way more expensive than it should be. So then instead you go to your local Walmart and try to pick up a pre-con and they're all like 50 to $60 there now. And you don't really want to do that either. And even after you buy that pre-con, you realize, well, I'm going to need to buy sleeves to protect my cards and I'll need to buy uh, some dice to denote what's going on in a game. And I'm also going to need to pick up a deck box to hold everything in. And then you get overwhelmed and then you decide, yep, fuck it. I'm not going to play Match of the Gathering. I'm just not going to do that. That's just not for me today. And we don't want that to be what happens, right? All of those layers of frustration for wanting to get into the game. And, and mind, this is for people who may not have started yet and don't necessarily have a friend there to guide them into starting the game. And I think the best way to start in Magic is always have a friend help you, have a friend teach you, have a friend be your guide. But if you don't have that, then you have me. Those $15 decks, as powerful as many of them can be, that's something you do after you're already a little established in the game. After you've already touched the water, figured out if you like it, because I'm gonna be honest, even when buying those physical decks for myself, what I've had to do is buy three to four decks at a time and then hit optimize. By getting three to four decks at a time and removing the basic lands from those decks, I've gotten it to where I'm able to purchase a bunch of them for about 12 or $13 each. And then the shipping cost doesn't end up being more than the 20-ish dollars. And paying $20 to ship four decks versus paying $20 to ship one deck, you see what I mean? Like it's gonna be better to do one or it's gonna be better to put a lot of them in a cart as opposed to many of them in the cart as opposed to one of them in the cart sorry but again if you're new that's not what you're trying to do 
So let's go ahead and cut all of that frustration out and let's start with this. What are you going to house your deck in? Because more important than your forced deck choice is what you choose to put it in. And pound for pound, dollar for dollar, the best protection you can get for your deck right now is actually this thing. I know, thanks to the professor, a lot of people have shouted the Stanley small, part, uh, small parts organizer to the moon and back, but if I'm being perfectly honest, the Stanley doesn't hold a cup up to the rigid. The rigid 10 compartment small parts organizer from Home Depot, I'm gonna be honest, it has one thing the Stanley does not have, and that is a gasket, which makes every deck you put in there basically immune to any moisture damage. You toss a silica packet in there, and you're good to go. It's just a thicker box anyway, and the Stanley has gotten way more expensive since the professor's video. I don't know why, but you can't get that thing for eight to ten dollars off Amazon anymore. Now it's about anywhere between 20 and 30 bucks, so you're paying almost the same price for the rigid, and the rigid is going to do you better in general. And if you're lucky and you're able to pick up the rigid at a local store, then you're not even having to pay shipping or anything like that. It's just free real estate. And then you're going to have to pick up some dice as well. And I'm going to be honest, the cheapest way to get dice is not going to a store and picking up a pack. Although, like, you could do that at a local Walmart if you wanted to. But pound for pound, getting this 50 pack of dice here from Amazon is going to give you enough die to play any counters based deck that you might want to play. And as for spin downs, getting a set of 10 spin downs here, or if you're at your LGS, usually they've got spin downs for about 50 cents each. You could pick them up that way too. But either way, this is about maximum pound for pound money in and value out stuff a couple spin downs will help you denote life in games that need it and commander damage and a big thing of die will make it to where if you're playing any kind of counters based deck then you're able to handle that so that is most of the equipment you'll need to hold your deck but that still leaves one other important thing the actual deck sleeves now if you were me and you wanted to protect your deck in the strongest thing possible, then a set of katanas or dragon shields is going to do you really, really well. But again, we're trying to go for value. So a set of this 500 pack black sleeve card top loaders gives you 500 sleeves for about $12. Sometimes it's on sale and you can get it for about $8. Uh, as you can see here, I picked up these last year and I've picked up them many, many times because I've liked the general quality that they have and they're pretty good at what they do. It's a five pack and each pack has a hundred sleeves. My suggestion are because these are cheaper sleeves, pick up one set of these and consider four of these packs for decks and one of them for spares in case any sleeves split or anything those will be your replacements for those sleeves just in case remember they are cheaper sleeves and if you want to replace these with good strong dragon shields later on then i would recommend you do so and then use these for protecting sleeves uh, things that you want to like double sleeve in a binder or something but this will get you the sleeves you need a deck box you need to protect all of your stuff, and it's a damn good one, pound for pound, and also a bunch of dice and counters and everything that you need to start out. This gets you 99% of the way there. Now, you may ask yourself, well, why don't I go ahead while I'm on Amazon, why don't I pick up a ton of extra things, like uh, one of these guys right here? As you can see, I have purchased one of these guys. These boxes of a ton of assorted Magic the Gathering cards, these tend to come with a bunch of rares, about 25 of them, and then a ton of commons and uncommons. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, don't pick up these. They are not worth the money that you spend on them. They have a ton of bulk cards and not bulk in the way that we are finding little bulk niche amazing cards that we're going to use 
for commander decks, these are the cards that stores simply cannot sell. Any card that a store cannot sell whatsoever, it throws into one of these bulk boxes usually in an effort to try to push that product away. If you want to get a friend uh, into Magic and you want them to start out with a collection, this is maybe kind of sort of a pseudo passable way to do so, but 99% of the cards you pick up in one of these are not going to be worth it. If you want to get one of these to have funsies and crack it open and see what uh, things you can find in the chaff, I'm not going to stop you. But I would not recommend that in any way, shape, or form. I would recommend you stay very, very, very far away from these bulk boxes. They are just crammed with garbage, and you just don't need that garbage. You want something that is functional, and you want it to be functional for a very, very low price. So, if you are trying to get the cheapest and best start you can in Magic, I've told you about all the equipment you'll need to play, but what about your actual deck? Like I said, you could go to your local Walmart and pick up something, and the best thing you can do is go to your local game store and support them, but if you don't have those options, then I'm going to go ahead and show you five decks you should start out with if you can find them. And these decks are all available on TCG Player for under $40, and they are all fantastic starts. Sometimes Magic Precons can be hit or miss, but each and every one of these is a bona fide hit in my eyes. Let's start out with this one right here. This is the Wilds of Eldraine Virtue and Valor Commander deck, and this deck is fan fucking Fantastic. The commander of the deck is this girl right here, Elevere of the Wild Court. She gives you virtuous roles, and while there's a lot of relevant text on her, and she's really, really neat because she has a draw engine attached to her, the big thing for her is she comes jam-packed with a fully fleshed out Enchantress engine. Enchantress is a very, very powerful deck type that I think everybody should give a try at one point. The idea of an Enchantress deck is to draw a ton of cards and play a bunch of individual enchantments to get effects based off of those. You get board wipes like Winds of Wrath that won't blow up your own enchanted cards, draw power like Rishkar's Expertise, which will give you a ton of draw because enchantments tend to give a ton of draw on them. Like when you, when you use enchantments, you tend to add a lot of power to your creatures, like with Verdant Embrace, which makes it very easy for you to gen generate a ton of advantage with cards like Rishkar's Expertise. You even have access to some of the strongest draw engines that Enchantress decks can get, like the Enchantress's Presence, which is a very, very hard to remove, as it's an enchantment, card, which draws you a card anytime you cast an enchantment spell. And I can't tell you how big that is. When you're playing an Enchantress deck, being able to just drop something on the board and say, hey, for every move I get to play by playing my deck, I will keep generating card advantage. You even get access to cards like the Satesian Champion, which will also draw you a card anytime you play an enchantment. Just cards like Eidolana Blossom and Core Spirit Dancer will do this for you too. They are fantastic draw engines. And most importantly, this is a deck that is super easy to upgrade and does not have a terrible mana base, as the mana base is made up of mostly basic lands. So the deck's not going to feel weird when you're playing it in terms of cards coming into play tapped a bunch. Also, it has Hall of Heliod's Generosity, which is one of the most important lands to have in an Enchantress deck. You can spend two or three dollars to get a bunch of Selesnya lands to make the mana base smoother if you want, but the Hall of Heliod's Generosity is one of the more expensive pieces for Enchantress decks in general. So if you are starting out, this is a fantastic start because it gives you one of the linchpin pieces you need in your mana base and about half of the amazing draw engine pieces that Enchantress wants to have access to in its games. Upgrade this thing with like a Sithis Harvest Hand and a couple other of the Enchantress creatures and you're going to be well on your way to having a very consistent deck that you can enjoy for probably years to come. And you can swap out that commander with a Yenna or the Sithis Harvest Hand I mentioned, and the deck will continue working really well. 
One of my main reasons I like this deck, though, is because Enchantress decks are very, very easy to bridge into a bunch of different worlds. You can take this deck and turn it into a Voltron-style deck very quickly by keeping the Enchantress package that's in it and then adding in uh, a new commander like Galea or Oral. And while if you're a starting player, if you're a new player, these words don't mean a whole lot, that's fine. They don't have to mean anything for you right now. You can simply pick up this deck and start with the commander who's in the deck already and just play it like that. And that's a perfectly reasonable start. The deck is super strong right out of the box and it keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. I found it at my LGS for $19.99 the other day. And even though I've already bought it and own every card in it, I bought it again because I wanted extra pieces that came in the deck. It is a fantastic deck if you have not played it before. But the next one I would say, and this one you can almost always find really cheap at your local game stores. This is the All Will Be One Phyrexia Commander. That's a, It's a Boros deck. And this Rebellion Rising deck, you can generally find for about 30, 35 bucks at an LGS. And you can find it here uh, on TCG Player for anywhere between 35 bucks when you count the uh, shipping in as well. This deck has been going up in price, but there's a good reason for it. Even though a lot of people don't seem to like this deck, I think the deck serves people super, super well. This is a tokens deck. If you are a new player, tokens is a very, very fun style of play for learning how to play because your cards are generating lots of advantage for you. Cards like Emiria Angel will generate you tokens throughout the game. The commander has a draw engine, impulse draw, but still a draw engine attached to itself as you play tokens, which is a fantastic thing to hand a new player. And it even has Othari Sun's Glory as a backup commander. And Othari makes its own very, very consistent, very, very powerful uh, Phoenix token deck that drops it shits out a ton of rebel tokens and the commander itself basically is a one-man engine if you are newer to the game commanders that are one-man omni engines are very very good for you to start out with but that's not the only reason that you should pick up this deck this gives you a piece that you will be able to use basically forever this is Clever Concealment. The card is currently $14, and its price really only goes up. If you can find this deck for about $20 to $30 at your LGS, or you can find it for that much generally on Amazon, and I showed you the prices that it is on TCG Player, Clever Concealment has the ability to phase out any number of non-land permanents that you have, and it generally costs two, three, or even zero mana, depending on how many creatures you're using to convoke it. This card will get you out of more jams and board wipes than I can even count, and I'd highly suggest you pick up this deck just to have a copy of this card it also comes in a very fantastic deck that has a super good uh set of rocks that keep the deck going as well it gives you access to soul guide lantern which is a super important piece of graveyard removal every deck should everybody should have one of these types of cards felidar retreat can go in a ton of different decks but again that clever concealment is worth more it's it's worth more than most every other card in the deck by far for a good reason token decks are generally a very very powerful start for people as the tokens themselves give new players a lot of pieces for not a lot of cardboard that they get to take advantage of in a game but speaking of tokens there is another token deck that I really think you should try out, and it keeps on doing the opposite of the other token deck. Uh, this deck keeps on getting cheaper, actually. This is Deep Clue C, and it's been on a decline financially in terms of how much it costs. So you might be able to find this for $30 or $25 soon, and I don't actually understand why. If we look at the deck, one of the reasons I think you should pick up this deck isn't even for the commander. The commander is okay, at the beginning of your upkeep, investigate when you draw your second card, put two one one counters on it. Like, 
it's fine, but it gives you access to Tezzeret uh, Betrayer Flesh, who is a borderline required card for any good artifact deck. She's just a fucking amazing card, but also you get access to a ton of different commanders you can play around with as a result of this. You get Adrix and Nev you can use for multi, uh, multiple doubling token decks if you so choose. Hell, my Slime Against Humanity deck uses Adrix and Nev as the commander. Lonus Crypto Zoologist is its own Simic Commander that is a fantastic card. Ata Academy Manufacturer is used for any type of clue, treasure, or food deck. You'll need this in any of those builds, and this gives you access to it now. Essex Fractal Boon is a fantastic Simic Commander, and Coma Cosmo Serpent used to be pretty expensive, and it will never treat you badly if you choose to make this card your commander. This deck is a wonderful first step into a billion different token style decks and it will give you a very different feel a very more uh, more resilient less aggro feel to tokens than the boros rebellion uprising deck would so this would be the other half of that token setup if you wanted to start the only problem i have with this deck honestly speaking is it doesn't have a great mana base. It uses a lot of tap lands, and I'm not the biggest fan of jamming a ton of those tap lands in a deck. So if you do pick up this deck, it will feel like it runs a little slower than the last two decks that I mentioned. So do at least keep that in mind. It does make up for this though, by having a very, very fast rock package it has access to, and knowledge is power, which is a super strong way to close out games. The deck is very, very powerful and i don't know why its price keeps on going down but if you're starting out and you're new and you're willing to take a little bit of time to learn the investigate mechanic and the ways you can abuse it then this deck will be for you it's a fantastic one the next deck though is going to be a very very straightforward one and if you're a newer player it gives you a couple avenues for winning a game that a lot of people don't tend to care about all that much but you're going to love it, so <laughs> that's the only thing that matters. This is the Zendikar Rising Sneak Attack deck. It's usually about $20 at an LGS. It's here for $35, but of course, you can always get it for cheaper if you look around. The Sneak Attack deck is a little weaker than the last decks that I mentioned just due to it being designed a few years prior, but the deck itself gives you Anawan the Ruin Thief as a rogue commander. This is the tribal deck that you will have access to. Tribal, uh, sometimes people call it Kindred, sometimes people call it Typal, but these types of decks focus on having one creature type predominantly throughout the entire deck, and generating advantage based on having that creature type. If the elf tribal deck were less expensive, I would have suggested that one too, but for some reason that one's like $100, and I don't even know why. So Anawan the Ruin Thief gives you a very, very strong mechanic in Rogue Tribal. You have the ability to mill people, which is getting rid of the top cards of their deck. So your deck can kill people either with damage or by getting rid of their valuable cards from the top of their deck throughout the entire thing. It also gives you some neat secondary commanders like Una, Queen of the Fey, and Sig the River Cutthroat. These are a couple value-based commanders that you can use, but the deck has a third way of killing people. It can mill them, knocking out their decks so that they lose the game. It can deal combat damage because it is an aggro rogues deck, or it can burn them to death by using cards like Sir Conrad the Grim and Zillaport Cutthroat, which let you move away from the aggro angle and move into a burn angle for the deck. The reason I suggest this deck is it gives you, as a new player, a lot of different ways you can approach winning a game, and so you can experiment with those as you are playing. Also, as you are milling, cards like Bone Horde will give you a very satisfying win. You also have the access, to, uh, because of this card and Black Blade Reforged and Scythe Claw that are in the deck, the deck has a secondary Voltron way it can win the game, equipping Anawan the Ruin Thief with a bunch of swords and punching an opponent for 21 damage so they lose the game instantaneously. The deck has a myriad of ways to go about winning a game. 
and because it is a tribal deck there's a lot of different ways you can upgrade the deck for very very cheap and there's a lot of angles you can take this deck just run anawan pure voltron if you want run him as a rogue tribal deck focus more on the mill aspect of the deck focus more on having lower cost unblockable creatures and generating value off of that no matter which way you go with him he's going to be a strong commander because he has a draw package attached to him and that gives people a burn effect as well he can go into the burn route he can go into the mill route he can go voltron he can go in a billion different directions which makes him a wonderful starting commander if you are just now learning the game but the last one i'm going to talk about is a it's a special one to me it's a very special one to me and if you pick up this deck it will always serve you well however it has a problem that problem is its price keeps on going up recently it's at the tail end of what i would consider affordable for pre-cons for magic the gathering but it is still in that range so i'm gonna talk about it damn it this is the adventures in the forgotten realm dungeon deck this is my baby this is Sephiris. If you want to figure out how to upgrade this deck or side grade it, check out my $15 Sephiris deck or my full power Sephiris deck. But this deck will never let you down. Sephiris is a super strong commander that lets you use what's called the dungeon mechanic to generate value. The reason I suggest this deck, this gives you a control option. I've suggested an aggro deck. I've suggested a resilient token deck. I've suggested a deck that can build into a, a shit ton of different things. And I've suggested an enchantment deck, which bounces between fighting and control. However, this one is a pure control deck. If we look at the actual deck itself, it comes with Ashen Rider and Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, two repeatable ways to blow up people's boards, basically. It comes with cards like Meteor Golem, which I have sung the praises of forever. It comes with Omni removal in the form of things like Necrotic Sliver. It has a secondary commander you can build off of in Nihilor. I'm not a big fan of him, but I know there are avenues to take him that are still good. Reassembling Skeleton is an Omni piece that is used in a billion different aristocrat style decks that I would highly recommend. Radiant Solar is needed for every dungeon based deck. Necromantic Selection is a fantastic asymmetric ish board wipe you get access to in this deck and like i said a lot of the removal pieces are omni removal utter end gets rid of any non-land permanent d spark gets rid of non-land permanence with mana cost four or greater it has it gives you access to a lightning greaves which always goes up in price for some stupid reason but it gives you access to this it comes with a wayfarer's bobble which you need for multiple different decks it has cards like propaganda you need to build uh pillow fort decks later on minimus containment is another wonderful piece of omni removal and the lands base is pretty decent for what it is it has a decent chunk of uh, tapped lands which you will want to upgrade over time but they managed to include lands like nimbus maze in here which were was one of my first times even knowing that this card existed i forgot that this weird style of future sight land existed at all until this deck came out and reminded me of the card's existence very very violently I think this deck, because it has so many different ways of removing game pieces from a board, is a very, very viable option for people to start out the game with. Because by giving somebody this type of deck, they are forced to learn how every other card is played. Sephiris as a commander will not work if you are not actively paying attention to the board state and making sure that you know what every other player is doing. The lesson you learn from Deep Clue C is how to manage your own resources. The lesson you learn from Anawan is how to overwhelm an opponent. The lesson you learn from Rebellion Rising is how to make maximum use out of few resources, turning them into a ton. The lesson you learn from Virtue and Valor is how to create an engine and keep it going. But the lesson you'll learn if you start with Sephiris is how to pay attention to a board state and how to keep it clean so that you don't lose the game to being overwhelmed which is one of the most important lessons you can learn in magic the gathering 
So to recap, we've got five different decks that are all decently affordable. I need to go where I'm supposed to go. Five different decks that are all decently affordable to start out with. We have a deck box that will pound for pound give you more storage for game pieces and decks than any other thing you can have on the market right now. And it has waterproofing gasket, which is something that even the Stanley can't boast. We have dice easy to use so we can keep track of counters and commander tax and damage and life totals everything we could possibly need and we have budget sleeves that we can use when starting out so that we can keep our decks protected without fear of losing our stuff and even though there are better versions of everything that i've mentioned somewhere on the market if you look we are looking to maximize every single penny that we have if you start with just the rigid toolbox and the sleeves some dice and a command uh, one of these commander decks you're down about 80 bucks which is more than the average brand new video game by about 10 or 20 dollars but the amount of hours of entertainment you'll get out of playing magic the gathering and the friends you'll make along the way are damn near priceless so if you're gonna start out start out right pick out something that is going to work for you. There's plenty of different pre-cons out there. It's very hard to go wrong with one these days, but these are the ones I've selected because of the different lessons that they will teach a player as they are learning the game of Magic the Gathering. If you've got a ton of liquid income, then feel free to pick up all of them. I don't make anything off of the links I'll be providing below. And if you want to take the next step, then go ahead and try picking at one of the builds that I've made on Moxfield. Just remember to optimize your list on TCG Player so you don't spend money out the ass for no reason and pick up multiple decks at the same time. So again, you don't spend money out the ass for no reason. But this is just how to start. If you're new to Magic and you've already come up with these frustrations of, I don't know what to get, I don't know where to get it, I don't know how to conveniently have this thing just available to me, this is what I would do. Ideally, get a pre-con from your local game store, go to your hardware store, pick up the, the rigid, and then go to town after that. But if you're just sitting in your room right now and you need to have all this stuff sent to you because of, I don't know, weird reasons, then I'll have links to all this stuff in the description below. Again, I don't get any money off of any of this, but I do want people to play this game and learn to enjoy it the same way I did. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you're a new player, let me know if this helped you. If you're thinking about getting into magic and you don't know what to do, and this video was super helpful to you in that way, let me know there too. And if you're a veteran here and you like the video or you've got some suggestions you would use otherwise, maybe for a follow-up, let me know down there as well. But either way, thank you all for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And insert end of video tagline here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here. They would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you. Sagitta, I'm not saying that part. And Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.